uh, truly spiritual brothers, sisters. So now, uh, uh, that's the main purpose. Now they arranged and they invited me. And logically, since this idea, I suggested, so I should come. <laughs> so, that's my informal part. Now, formality. Formal. His Holiness the Dalai Lama, um, dignitaries on the dais, the speakers uh, for this afternoon and this morning who are present, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to begin, even before welcoming you, with a couple of uh, notations. Um, is that uh, His Excellency uh, Mr. Uh, Hamid Ansari was due, but he was unable to make it on time for unavoidable, uh, because of an unavoidable meeting that he was called in for the last minute. Um, so he will be joining us a little later. Um, and um, there will be others uh, who are uh, delayed by traffic, I think, um, an old Delhi story. Um, and uh, so we will welcome them a little bit later. But to all here, a warm welcome to all of you to this conference on celebrating diversity in the Muslim world, which has been initiated by the Muslims of Ladakh in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, um, inspired and patronized by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, for which we are all, of course, very grateful. Thank you all for coming. That said, perhaps an explanation is owed to even why a minuscule population of Ladakh, barely 100,000, has taken it upon itself to initiate this conference celebrating diversity in the vast ocean of the Muslim world consisting of 1.6 billion people, and how they were urged and inspired to do so by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Is it just a quaint fascination or does it have a leg to stand on? It's a long subject of scholarly inquiry and that has been uh, studied now for many years. However, let me capture it very briefly. One way to understand the importance of the Muslims in the lexicon of Tibetan civilization is by walking the ground as anthropologists, textual academics, and researchers. We would understand then that the Muslim interaction with the Tibetan world is a phenomenon that began in the 8th century AD and continues to this day. Evidence of this is to be found in the Dunhuang documents starting as early as the 9th century in textual information, wherein Muslims are referred with, to with names like Tajik and Khache. Uh, Khache, incidentally, is the term that is most uh, widely used for the Muslims, and it is etymologically connect connected to the word Kashir, which is Kashmir. So it gives you an idea of how early that connection took place. Kashmir, from my own state of Jammu and Kashmir. Contemporarily, today, variants of Tibetan language, it must be remembered, are spoken and its culture adopted in no less than four of the seven Sark countries, including Nepal, India, where variants of the language are spoken and written in the state of GNK, the state of Himachal Pradesh, Sikkim, West Bengal, and Arunachal. It is also spoken in another Sark country, Pakistan, amongst, uh, in an area known as Baltistan, uh, which also represents a language, and in Bhutan, where Dzongkha is also a variant of Tibetan. Another way of understanding the presence of Muslims in the Tibetan world or the Tibetan civilization is to look at a map. The frontiers of the Tibetan world are ringed 
by Muslim areas. To the west, there is a complex of mountains collectively called the Pamir Knot. In the northwest, by Xinjiang, where the, there are the Uyghur, Kazakhs, Uzbeks, and other Turkic-speaking Muslims. In the northeast, Sham, uh, Amdo, or as we say, Qinghai also, uh, region. And to the east, by Gansu, and to the south, by India, where, presence, uh, where the Muslim presence began in the 11th century, increasing in influence into an empire that lasted up to the mid-18th century. It is therefore reasonable to assume that Tibetan culture would interact with the Muslim world. And indeed, the literature on various parts, uh, in uh, various parts of the Tibetan world records the presence of Muslims of Uyghur, Kashmiri, and Chinese ethnicity and mixes of them. We will not, of course, explore all of this today. But minuscule as we are in Ladakh, we would like to believe that our experience as Muslims matters. Wonder how it fits in with the rest of the Muslim world, and indeed, to understand our place in that world with an understanding of how theologians, scholars, and practitioners of the wider family of the Muslim world. A world we must openly acknowledge that is challenged to imbibe internal unity and harmony on the one hand, and on the other by external misunderstanding and misinterpretation. We make a humble beginning with this, with the encouragement of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and with an ambition to expand in the years to come. I thank you for your attention. My name is Sadiq Wahid. I am from Ladakh. I should have introduced myself a little bit earlier, but I will keep in uh, the informality of uh, His Holiness's introduction. Um, and uh, I'm welcome uh, to all of you once again. And I would now like to invite Hafiz Ghulam Muhammad to, uh, to recite a passage from the Quran uh, with which uh, such a function should begin. Uh, Hafiz Ghulam Muhammad Saab. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين اتقوا الله حقا تقاته آمنوا اتقوا الله حقا تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْلَفَ بَحْتُمْ بِنِ 
نعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون ولتكن منكم أمة يدعون إلى الخير ويا مرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر وأولئك هم المفلحون ولا الذين تفرقوا واختلفوا من بعد ما جاء واختلفوا من بعد ما جاءهم البينا وأولئك لهم عذاب عظيم صدق الله العظيم Now I would like to only translate these verses of Holy Quran in English, not explanation. <coughs> oh, you who have believed, fear Allah, as he should be feared, and do not die except as the obedience of Allah. And hold firmly to the roof of Allah altogether, and do not become divided. And remember the favor of Allah upon you when you were enemies, and he bowed your hearts together. And you became by his favor, brothers. And you were on the edge of a pitch of the fire, and he, yani Allah, saved you from it. Thus, does Allah make clear to you his verses that you may be guided. And let there be arising from you the nations, inviting to all that is good, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. And those will be the successful. And do not be like the ones who became divided and differ after the clear proof had come to them. And those will be a great punishment. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah. Thank you, Ulama Ahmad Sahib. Um, thank, you. thank you for the translation. But there is, I think in the original languages of all the spiritual traditions, a certain magic um, that one can feel. And uh, as you heard it in Arabic, I think um, it was very moving. So uh, thank you. Our next, um, we, we, the conference was arranged formally by the uh, Muslims of Ladakh, uh, Leh in particular, and the Anjuman e Moinul Islam and the Anjuman e Imamia, which is the uh, Sunni and the Shia, respectively, um, uh, segments of the Muslim population in Ladakh. So I'd like to invite uh, Abu Qayyum Giri uh, to come uh, and uh, talk to us briefly about the intent of the conference today. Thank you.
ابو قیوم گیری His Shaolin is Dalai Lama. All the dignitaries on the dais, ladies and gentlemen, Tashi Dilik Jule, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. Welcome to this in India International Center for our conference. Our, in our intent is to celebrate diversity in the Muslim world. The Muslims of Leh, Ladakh, a very minuscule population in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, as you all know very well, feel honored to host this conference, which we would like to think of as a beginning to an ongoing effort that was first suggested by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and one and a half year ago when he visited Leh, which usually he used to do for the last 25 years. So I cannot begin this welcome without first thanking His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, for inspiring us to begin encouraging us to continue and monitoring our efforts in trying to organize this conference. For us in Ladakh, His Holiness represents a world of personality that has brought Ladakh into the limelight with the annual visits to our land for many, many, many years. Alerting us to fact that in our humble corner of the world, we enjoy an atmosphere of cooperation, harmony, friendliness, for which we should be very thankful. Of course, we do have differences. When there are differences, dialogues and reconciliation have been our tradition and trademarks. This has been true between Muslims, between Muslims as well as between Buddhists, our elder brothers. So without wasting much time, without taking away much time, briefly I'll just, the first intent of this conference is to make ourselves conscious of the advantages we have as a harmonious community on the roof of the world called Ladakh. Learn from them and to figure out how it can be applied to the Muslims living in the rest of country, our country, India wherein it is comparatively peaceful, harmonious, compared to some other places in the world. Our second intent to, is to let the Muslims and non-Muslims know that we practice our religion in our corner of India in an inclusive way, in keeping with the spirit of Islam, and of its fundamental teachings, following our role model, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With stress to Hukukul Ibad, which constitutes Ikhlaq, human moral values, education, and love for all living beings which, of course, constitutes 70% of the Islamic teachings. Where the present Muslims are lagging behind and needs to be inculcated, these qualities within ourselves. Our third intent is to learn from the eminent speakers today, both in this morning session and later in the afternoon session from our traditional ulmas and young scholars. 
let me say that we honestly we honestly intend to learn from learn from them and to take back any word of advice and suggestions so that this concept be taken to other parts of the muslim world once again i welcome you all and how i hope you will find this conference fruitful and beneficial once again thank you very much to <laughs> jiche um i'd now like to invite the uh, president of the anjumane moilul uh, anjumane imamia uh, ashraf ali barcha Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim The patron and the chief guest of today's conference his holiness the 14th Dalai Lama all dignitaries on the dais ladies and gentlemen Leh is a remote region with a tiny population of muslim which is in Ladakh During his visit to Ladakh his holiness the the dalai lama who is a cultural unifier for all of us in ladakh met it a point to tell us that our community was lucky and fortunate to have an atmosphere that is stable calm and peaceful when compared to elsewhere but we also know that like in other places there is a danger that is that this peace will not remain indeed within the community we know that there are problems some minor others larger this conference is being organized with the hope that we need, we if the seeds of such problem exist we are aware of them and can avoid them so in keeping with that theme well while we do wish to celebrate our diversity we have also chosen to highlight areas in which some problems may exist and ask our esteemed speakers to tell us about them so that we can look straight at the problems and avoid them i hope you see the themes of the need for dialogue among muslims gender sensitivity issues regarding media interpretation of muslims and their religion as the first is that esteemed speakers will help us to identify some pragmatic steps to avoid larger problems second that the conference will generate enough mental ecology my third hope is that after we cul cultivate the spirit of harmony within among ourselves we will be able to take our message to other parts of india and to the world at large a message inspired by teachings of our religion and his holiness the dalai lama's encouragement to us to learn from it let me end with fourth more modest hope that will find the conference fruitful and rewarding for you thank you very much to jiche as you will see from your programs um we will call upon his holiness uh, to address us now um but before that i would like to make a brief announcement and that is that as you can see um 
we are fortunate that in keeping with the spirit of dialogue and His Holiness's generosity, he has agreed to field some questions from the audience, as is the practice of all great teachers all over the world, to answer questions uh, that people have. In order to avoid the questions being redundant or too long, please write down your questions on the pads that have been provided to you, and then there'll be volunteers walking across the aisles uh, during and immediately after the talk. Um, and if you will pass them on, they'll be uh, sort of sorted so that we don't have redundancy and then passed on for me to read um, with them. Also, I prefer direct question, <laughs> not written. All right. <laughs> much better. So, uh, well, I, I, think, uh, if, I think we've been overruled by his order. If, quest if question have some sort of uh, uncomfortable for me, then I have a right to say uh, no comment. <laughs> so no problem. All right. Well, as, as you can see, His Holiness is very generous, so we will, uh, we, we will ask you to raise your hands. I will have the very difficult and onerous, not right now, uh, I will have the very onerous and difficult task of trying to identify, but you'll, we, we'll have to limit uh, the number of questions. So I ask for your forgiveness in advance uh, for this. And uh, I'll have to apologize for that because uh, we can't uh, continue on for as long as I'm sure His Holiness would like to sometimes. So with that, uh, and without further ado, uh, may I ask Your Holiness to kindly address uh, the audience. <clears throat> now, since this planet developed over billion years, different culture. Then also, different faith. I think over 3,000 years. So now today, uh, about 7 billion human beings, about 1 billion non-believers. And among the about six billion, you see different religious tradition. So this, uh, I think, around I think three thousand years. Firstly, I think in India, the the tradition of meditation we call shamatha and with that and also analytical meditation we call vipassana in any way the i think india's tradition ahimsa karuna I think wonderful idea. So I always feel uh, India civilization, Chinese civilization, Egyptian civilization, I think the most sophisticated as the philosophy or concept developed in the Kasa. Indus Valley civilization. In any way, now today, seven billion human beings, everyone want happy life. Do not want suffering. 
happiness is the basis of survival. Suffering uh, is the sort of cause of the causing, diminishing, or disappear. So therefore, each seven billion human being, you see, want to survive. In order to survive, happiness is the key factor. So seven billion human beings, everyone want happy life. And the basis of happiness is human compassion. Now some scientists say basic human nature is compassionate. It is true. We are social animal. Uh, any social animal, individuals survival depend on rest of the community. So in order to bring together and taking care, the key thing is love. So from birth, we received maximum loving kindness from our mother. Nothing to do with religion. So basic human nature, individual, himself or herself, more compassionate mind and surrounded with compassionate atmosphere that that person much happier. Her whole life become much sort of successful. One individual surrounded without friend or affection, then that individual, no matter how rich, uh, cannot survive, cannot be happy one. It is true. And then, moreover, now scientists, they say, constant anger, constant fear is actually eating our immune system. So now, uh, be more kind person is nothing to do with religion, simply in order to be happy individual, happy family, happy community. So now today, the reality is seven billion human beings, different continent, different climate, different language, but same human being. So everyone want happy life. So now, future of East, depend West. Western future depend on East. Similarly, South and North. So now today, the reality, the entire seven billion human being is actually one human community. So now, according to that reality, now we really need a sense of global responsibility. Uh, it's nothing, something holy. It's sim something necessary. Uh, so therefore, firstly, I always consider I am another human being. Out of seven billion, I am one human being. So my own future entirely depends on the rest of the world. Rest of the world, peace, happy, I get a benefit, maximum benefit. Now today's world, 
in spite of many material development, material facility, but uh, a lot of problem, a lot of suffering. Essentially, we human beings created. Different religion, different, how say the nation. So long they play together, they have the oneness of human spirit in there. Very good. Then gradually we are getting uh, modern education, so called modern education. And very much oriented about material value. Then, very much emphasis uh, different uh, race or different nation. So my number one commitment is try to uh, share other people. We are the same human being. When I meet people, I never feel I'm something different. I'm the best. Except the beer or these things. That's come later. I think no child, when born in, oh, with beer. <laughs> these things come later. <laughs> so therefore, there are basically seven million human beings, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, we are the same. We all want happy life. We all have the potential. Commitment is try to one human being. Share with other so people. On. The basic human value is compassion, oh, loving kindness. Uh, on the basis of scientific finding, not religious sort of thinking. Then, second commitment. I'm Buddhist. So all major religious tradition carry the same message, message of love. Now Muslim, Islam uh, case. Those Muslim in Tibet, as I briefly mentioned, very peaceful. No record of quarrel. Muslim, very peaceful. And then also my own birthplace area, many Muslims, very peaceful. Then Islam, one time in Turtuk, in Ladakh, one meeting, one local, the head of the Muslim, oh, oh, Imam. Is he expressed any Muslim? They love Allah, so they must love 
entire creation of Ella. Wonderful. Wonderful. So Buddhist terminology is mother sentient being, entire sentient being. Uh, we should feel as dear as your own mother. So in the philosophical field, big differences, but the real message is the same. We should extend our love towards enter the creation way, the creature of Allah. And then one occasion, one Muslim, as he told me, any person uh, who create bloodshed other than no longer genuine Muslim practitioner. So therefore, you see, we already witness many Muslim through centuries in Tibet, very peaceful. And then, there uh, are uh, Islam teaching, main teaching is uh, uh, practice of love, loving kindness. So now that is the reality. Now, unfortunately, we enjoy here peaceful, but next to our neighbor, Afghanistan killing in the name of Shia and Sunni and Syria. And then, uh, what is it called? Yemen. When I saw some children, immense suffering, no proper medication. Sometimes when I look at this picture, sometimes tears come. What is wrong with these young children? So then, you see, we have to make effort, whether achieve or not, you see, to bring a more peaceful world through inner peace. And then different religion, different tradition, mainly different philosophy. Some say there is God, creator. Uh, but the Jainism and Buddhist, according to our sort of concept, no God. No creator. <laughs> so, what type, you know, the Bishop Tutu, oh, very close, close friend. I respect him. So, when, whenever we met, you see, he always teasing me. He described me as a mischievous Dalai Lama. <laughs> and I respond, mischievous bishop. So one, one occasion, you see, he told me, he as a Christian, believer, believing in God. So therefore, uh, after his death, he ready to go to heaven. Dalai Lama, non-believer. So go something different place. <laughs> There's... Uh, uh, most probably hell. <laughs> so, in the philosophical field, there is big differences. Oh. And within, uh, I say, non-theistic religion in India, Jains, and some part of Sangha uh, philosophy, and Buddhist, say, uh, Again, you see differences. Uh, the concept of atma and anatma. 
within Buddhism, there are differences. In philosophical fields, many differences. And within Nalanda tradition, Buddhist tradition, Vibhashek, Sodantik, Chitta Mantra, Madhimika, at least four major different school of thought. Okay. That is useful to different people, different mental disposition, so different philosophical view is relevant. But all, you see, carry the same message, message of love. So like theistic religion, uh, we all created by God. God, infinite love. So God looks like our father. One father, entire world, entire humanity. So we all children of one father. Infinite love, loving kind, God. So if you seriously think in this line, and how can you kill each other? We all children of one father. That's God. And infinite love. Impossible if you truly believe that. Then, according to Buddhism and Jainism, no creator, so self-creation. So we have more freedom to kill each other. <laughs> so, so therefore, uh, the different religion uh, all carry same message, message of love. So therefore, uh, all major world tradition, in spite of different philosophical views, all carry the same message and same potential, same effective. So look on this planet among the around the six billion believers. There are really wonderful people there. Then uh, meantime, in the name of religion, killing each other. Not only in the past history, but even today. In the name of religion, killing each other. In Bangladesh, Buddhist, Muslim. And then uh, in Middle East, in Egypt, Christian, uh, Muslim and then some other Muslim countries, Shia and Sunni. Unthinkable. In the very name of religion, killing each other. Unthinkable. So most of the problem which we humanity facing, uh, except nature disaster and some other thing, otherwise, most of the problem is essentially our own creation. It's big contradiction. Basic human nature, more compassionate. Everyone want, everyone want happy life, peaceful life, yet uh, create a lot of killing. I think, unfortunately, this wonderful brain, human brain, use for killing. How many different weapons you see create? And how many money spent produce for weapon? Weapon means killing. And peace, peaceful world, peaceful world, slogan won't help. Peace must develop here. Inner peace. Then real peace come. So most of the religion have the same potential to bring inner peace. 
use in different philosophies. Okay. So now, religious harmony is very essential. So I am Buddhist. One of my second my commitment is promotion of religious harmony. Now here, uh, the big question: religious harmony can possible? The answer is hundred percent yes. Look, India. Oh, over three thousand years, different religious tradition develop. And now today, modern India, all major world religious tradition live together. I always see uh, pointing, Bombay, Zorazuddin, uh, Kasaparsi, very small community. They carry their own religion, uh, some fire puja, uh, but no fear. In Bombay, millions of Hindus, millions of Christians, millions of Islam, but no fear. So India is the example. Religious harmony is possible. So me meantime, now, time come since, you see, conflict in the name of religion uh, is growing, so we should make every effort, you see, to tell world, to show world religious harmony is possible and all religion carry same message. Uh, different tradition necessary, different mental disposition. So we need different sort of the tradition, different philosophy. So now, Indian, uh, in India should be more active to show the world religious harmony is possible and necessary. Now in this case, within Muslim, Shia and the Sunni, our next our neighbor killing in the very name of Shia and Sunni. Unthinkable. So now Indian Muslim uh, should be active to show the world, firstly, religious harmony is important, is possible. And within that, Shia and the Sunni, truly brothers, sisters, uh, no basis, no reason to killing each other on the name of uh, Shia and the Sunni. So Indian Muslim uh, now should be more active to show uh, the rest of the rest of the world uh, the Shia, Sunni, and particularly those Muslim countries. So that is my uh, so main reason to suggest our Ladakhi uh, Muslim brothers, sisters. I really appreciate now they uh, implement. Thank you. Then, then my third commitment is uh, I'm Tibetan. Tibetan, inside as well as outside, they trust me. So I have the responsibility is it to think about their well-being. So political matter, political matter since uh, 2011, I totally retired. We already have, through democratic way, elected political leadership, and they carry the responsibility. My now responsibility is uh, reminds people, concerned people, Tibetan environment is quite delicate and very important. All major rivers which cover China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, these major rivers, the ultimate source from Tibet. Now due to climate change, 
global warming. Uh, there is real danger now. Uh, these water resources eventually reduce. So therefore, uh, we should pay more attention about uh, environment in Tibet. One Chinese friend, environmentalist, uh, he told me, according his own sort of also the, uh, observation, the effect global warming from Tibetan plateau as much as South Pole and North Pole. So he described Tibetan plateau is third pole. Uh, this is number one. Then number two, uh, I try my best to educate people. Tibetan knowledge, Tibetan cultural heritage. Uh, in India, Nalanda tradition, really, I think most sort of advanced sort of uh, edu education center, knowledge center. So that since 8th century, uh, Indian Nalanda master, Shantarakshita, invited to Tibet, he introduced the Nalanda tradition. One unique thing about the Nalanda tradition is we extensively we see study philosophy and psychology and uh, what's it? Uh, logic. So that uh, very useful. So we uh, always you see emphasis importance of investigation, not just the belief, faith. Buddha himself you see, expressed to us, all oh, my followers, monks, scholars, should not accept my teaching out of faith, uh, but rather thorough investigation. So some of the Nalanda master actually rejected some Buddha's own word. If we accept this literally, it goes against reason. Therefore, we must reject. That's a Nalanda tradition. So therefore, now uh, it becomes quite clear the Nalanda sort of way of thinking Emphasis can go reason. side by side experiment. So we can go side by side with the modern science. We not emphasis on faith like that. So that that kind of culture we kept alive. So I feel Tibetan uh, as a Buddhist knowledge according to Nalanda is really worthwhile to preserve. And we can consider these as an academic subject, not a religious subject, like that. So, so then now I uh, 84 year old. Uh, major portion of my life spent in this country, in India. Uh, so now, uh, remaining my life, I am trying to uh, revive of ancient Indian knowledge about a psychology. Which, base, which is basis of Ahimsa and Karuna. So, so now, uh, conclusion, our uh, main so this time, main so uh, purpose is try to show uh, the world in general, particularly Muslim world, there is no basis quarrel in the name of Shia and Sunni. Uh, truly brothers, sisters, and we should uh, live in the spirit of brotherhood, sisterhood. Okay, thank you.
Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Your Holiness. Um, I should say that we will now start the questions, but before that, um, there will be a 10-minute break. And I want to announce that this is a very strategic break because at exactly quarter to 11, we will start the question and answer session mm -hmm. with His Holiness. So in the meantime, those who want to take a quick break may want to do that and have a cup of tea outside may please do that. But we will start exactly at quarter two. We are running about five minutes late. Thank you very much. Chai or way? Chai or way? Um, and uh, I think, um, regardless, I would like to just, if, if I could have your a minute, we would, uh, I've been told that we will uh, try to do the practice of asking the questions on a piece of paper, uh, but I will, I, uh, I will announce your name. If you could include your name on the piece of paper, I will announce your name, and you'll need to stand up so that His Holiness can put a face. <laughs> Most, okay, well, we'll, we'll see that. Please have your tea outside. Um, 